this theme, Unreasonable Africa, came to me in the way that some people fall asleep at night, slowly at first, and then all at once. It captured everything about Africa. Her boldness, her defiance, her passion, her integrity. In truth, it is difficult to capture the feelings that unreasonable Africa invokes through the limitations of vocabulary. I think the Oxford Business Forum for Africa really gives us a chance to um, showcase what the business school is doing in terms of its um, uh, focus on Africa, but more importantly it brings together um, students from the business school who are interested in doing business in and with African countries, together with uh, business leaders from industry. Let me just link uh, the unreasonable Africa to uh, this very place. Uh, the name that, that uh, uh, was given by the Mandela parents to their son, Polishasha, uh, is, is frequently in, uh, translated as the one who looks for trouble. Now that is being seriously unreasonable, so to have the Unreasonable Africa Conference in the Nelson Holishasha Mandela Lecture Theatre, I think, is so opposite. The Africa Rising narrative will win but it's going to win uh, only when two things happen. One, these countries manage to deal with their own specific challenges, and we've identified what they are, uh, and that's through the hard work of the people and the governments of those countries individually, uh, and when the global conditions ease so that we can get a more normal narrative, but this is going to be a cycle that may take years. As a business, when you think about politics and when you think about different issues that are being thrown, thrown up by politics, you need to be able to prioritize. And in order to do that, you need to take a rigorous and fact-based approach to understand how, what these mean for your profits and for your bottom line. Across um, the conference this year we had different themes, so we had themes around infrastructure and technology. We also had people who, who shared practical experience and actually pushed the boundaries on what the narrative is on or how difficult it is to do business on the continent. It really pays if you've got a, a, a tried, uh, perhaps tested and testable business continuity strategy. Because when, when, when there is political risk in a country, often things move so fast, you can't even get out. Through entrepreneurship, we can create real economic value for ourselves, for our shareholders, whilst also helping to solve some of the greatest challenges that face the continent today. I think one of the key things is about an intergenerational dialogue. Um, we have had individuals here from high school, to undergrad, to graduate, to postgrad, to people who are in the field and people who are seniors at senior level within you know, their different fields. And having all those people come together under one roof to discuss something that they're so passionate about and how we can talk about the best practices, talk about you know, some of the realities about you know, working in Africa, doing business in Africa, living in Africa. I know that I am speaking here to an audience that has choices. Every single person in this room has the choice to stay here in the Western world, in the Northern Hemisphere, and live a very, very comfortable life. You also have a choice to go back to an Africa that is still living on aspirations, but still lives with a lot of adversity and a lot of difficulty. I hope that today has, in some shape or form, better prepared you to script the African narrative. Regardless of where you have travelled from and where you are going to, go forward with an intentional mind. There is no question of Africa's potential. The pieces of the puzzle are already there. Now watch what happens when you begin to connect the dots. 
it was foggy this morning, is it a little clearer now? Maybe a bit. Um, a little bit clearer about opportunities, a little bit clearer about challenges, a little bit clearer about inspiration. Thank you.